Snipers, the mysterious deadly ghosts of war. One moment you are on a boring patrol, and the next you're gone. The snipers in this video were all exceptional in their own right, but some were even deadlier than others. Let's dive into the sneaky yet dangerous world of history's deadliest snipers. Simo Hoya, 542 confirmed deaths. Although we tend to conceive of World War II as a continuous unbroken fight, there were various wars that occurred in addition to the Global Inferno. The Winter War between the Soviet Union and Finland is one such war, and despite lasting just 105 days between 1939 and 1940, it was long enough for a simple farmer named Simo Höja to become the deadliest sniper in contemporary history. Höja was born in 1905 in a region of Finland that is now part of Russia, according to History Extra. He was a farmer who enjoyed hunting, skiing and shooting, which happened to be the exact skill set required to be a lethal sniper during the Winter War. His habit of hunting birds and foxes forced him to learn how to lurk, keep absolutely still, and wait for the ideal moment to strike. According to all reports, Hoyo was unattached to his work, working alone and bravely, and once remarking that he didn't hate the enemy, he merely did his job to the best of his ability. Hoyo had only served 98 days before he was hospitalized due to an injury. He killed an absolutely horrific 542 Russians in those 98 days, at a time and location where there was very little sunshine to work with. With such a lethal resume, he acquired the moniker White Death. Ivan Sidorenko, 500 plus confirmed deaths. Ivan Sidorenko, according to War History Online, was an unlikely sharpshooter. He enrolled in an art school shortly before World War II, despite coming from an impoverished background. When he was enlisted into the Soviet Army in 1939, he was assigned to a mortar regiment and received no sniper training. He was given the standard army rifle the Mosin Nagant. According to Military Times, the Soviets upgraded this rifle to fit a scope, making it ideal as a sniper rifle. Although it was widely criticized for being excessively long and heavy, it was actually highly accurate, as Sidorenko quickly demonstrated. Sidorenko was self-trained, according to Range 365. In his spare time and as a member of the Mortar Battalion, he went out and hunted for German soldiers, and he is credited with almost 500 deaths. He was able to rack up so many official deaths in part because he didn't simply target individual soldiers. He also used explosive bullets to target gasoline supply cars. Sidorenko's impact was even greater, though because he began trading other snipers and finally sent 250 snipers into the battle. Even if they were half as talented as their master, Sidorenko would be one of the most formidable opponents the Germans had ever faced. Fyodor Oklopov, 429 kills. Despite having a staggering number of documented kills, Fyodor Oklopov is little known even within the former Soviet Union. And it's all because of racism. Oklopov was an ethnic Yakut from Russia's east in what now is the Republic of Saka. According to historian Albert Axel, in Russia's Heroes, the Yakuts are famed for their self-sufficiency and were traditionally proficient at stalking and hunting. They were also considered to be expert sharpshooters. Oklopov became serious about sniping when a German sniper killed his brother, Vasily. He promised to open an account and begin adding Germans to it, and he didn't back down. He allegedly hunted at night, seeking for cigarette ash and other minor clues to lead him to the enemy. He also used automatic weapons, and his commanding commanders frequently sent him out with a machine gun to clear away German resistance. His overall kill count is likely to be well over 1,000, although the majority of those kills are not included in his official sniper tally of 429. Oklopov was finally awarded the title of Hero of the Soviet Union and the Order of Lenin in 1965. Francis Pega Megabau, 378 confirmed deaths. Canadians aren't typically thought of as violent people, and men named Francis don't have a reputation for being particularly skilled at murder. But during World War I, Francis Pega Megabau disproved both of those notions. Pega Megabau was an indigenous First Nations person who chose to serve in the First World War in 1914. According to the Canadian Encyclopedia, Pega Megabau, nicknamed Paggy by his pals, was raised in the Anishinaabe tribe's customs, which included plenty of hunting experience. He used such skills at night to infiltrate no man's land, the unoccupied region between the lines, and carefully wait for signs of German soldiers. 
According to the National Interest, he chalked up nearly 400 kills as a sniper while utilizing the Ross rifle, which is widely regarded as the worst weaponry ever supplied to an army in history. The Ross constantly jammed and soldiers began to see it as a better club than a pistol. Snipers, on the other hand, adored it for its long range and accuracy. Mega Megabau, interestingly, did not just slaughter indiscriminately. He also took 300 German men hostage and concluded the war as the most decorated indigenous soldier in Canadian history. Lyudmila Pavlichenko, 309 confirmed deaths. Lyudmila Pavlichenko is a feminist idol in some ways. According to Sky History, she was motivated to take up shooting after hearing a boy brag about how fine a shot he was. She fell in love with the sport and swiftly rose to prominence. When Germany invaded Russia in 1941, she volunteered for military service and resisted attempts to steer her into nursing and other vocations considered more appropriate for women. Fortunately for the Soviets, she did end up in the military. Pavlochenko was initially posted to an area around Odessa. She killed 187 German soldiers in less than three months, earning her a promotion. She was then sent to Crimea, where she continued to slaughter the enemy at an astounding rate. Surprisingly, she is credited with the deaths of 36 enemy snipers as part of her total. Pavlochenko's final confirmed kill tally was 309 enemy soldiers, and her actions earned her one of World War II's most ferocious nicknames. Lady Death. According to Smithsonian Magazine, Pavlichenko went on a promotional tour after being injured by a mortar. Notably, she traveled to the United States and met President Franklin Roosevelt and his wife, Eleanor. But she also had to deal with the sexist and arrogant American media, which focused on the cut of her uniform and her body rather than her murderous courage in defense of her nation. Vasily Saitsev, 225 confirmed deaths. Vasily Saitsev is one of the few World War II snipers you could be familiar with. A dramatized version of his narrative was recounted in the film Enemy at the Gates, which starred Jude Law as Saitsev and Ed Harris as his, perhaps fake, Nazi counterpart. While the reality of Saitsev's sniper duel with a German sniper is debatable, his actual sniper accomplishments are not. Saitsev was credited with 225 kills during the Battle of Stalingrad alone. What's even more astonishing is that Saitsev had to work his way up to become a sharpshooter. He was raised as a hunter and was initially sent to regular soldiers. It wasn't until he started sniping German officers with his Mosin Nagant rifle that he was granted a sniper weapon and assigned a mission. From here, Saitsev went on a killing spree, murdering 40 Germans in his first 10 days at Stalingrad. But Saitsev's legacy extends beyond the number of Nazis he eliminated. He changed sniper methods by drawing influence from fellow sniper Simo Hoya's work. Saitsev would map out potential hiding spots ahead of time, patiently waiting for a prey, then displays to keep one step ahead of pursuers. Softrap also said that he created team tactics, with several groups of snipers and scout operating together, a method known as Sixes that is still utilized by current militaries. Zhang Taofang, 214 confirmed deaths. You can attribute Zhang Taofang's sniper's legacy to two factors, apart from his unusually high amount of confirmed kills. First, he had no sniper training and appeared to figure it out on his own overnight. Second, he had to shoot his targets with an antique rifle without a scope or even a pair of binoculars to sight with. Taofang's first try at sniping was a horrible failure, according to author Charles Strong, who reported that he fired 12 rounds in fast succession and missed every one. Not only did he miss his targets, but he also exposed himself by firing so many rounds in such a short period of time. Taofang, on the other hand, regrouped, altered his technique, and transformed himself into one of the deadliest snipers in history. He also learned his lesson about wasting ammunition and disclosing his position. Taofang killed seven American soldiers in Korea Korea, with only nine shots following his initial failure. According to Variety, he killed 214 enemy forces in 32 days with only 435 rounds. Tao Fang is now regarded as a hero in China, which views the Korean War very differently from America. Chris Kyle, 150 confirmed deaths. Chris Kyle might be the most well-known sniper in the United States, thanks in part to his best-selling memoir, American Sniper, and the movie adaptation starring Bradley Cooper. According to biography, Kyle joined the Navy at the age of 25 in 1999 and swiftly advanced to the elite SEALs unit. 
Aside from his lethality, what makes Kyle's sniper career so intriguing is the fact that he used a diverse range of weaponry in his kills. Most snipers like to use a single weapon, but Kyle employed many weapons according to Sandbox. It is known that Kyle has used five different guns, and because he was a huge, solidly built man, he frequently utilized heavy weapons with more strength. Kyle gained the nickname the Devil of Ramadi while serving in Iraq, where he tallied up 150 verified kills, including an astounding 2,100-yard shot that Kyle described as a straight-up luck shot. Kyle eventually completed four deployments in Iraq, surviving several injuries, including two gunshot wounds and at least six explosions. He was tragically assassinated at a shooting range in 2013 by a mentally disturbed veteran. He was only 38 years old, but he will be recognized as one of history's finest snipers. What lethal snipers should we focus on in a dedicated video about their life and career? Please share your thoughts in the comments and like and subscribe for more untold history.